So finally, this is the year I wish I could say it is my time to upgrade to the M4 MacBook Pro from my M1 Pro MacBook, which I've been using for almost three years. Upgrading after three years, it would, it would have been the fascinating moment because the performance upgrade is massive this year too. But let me show you the truth because today I went to the Apple store. First of all, I looked at the nano texture display. If you want to get the MacBook with the nano texture display, you have to pay $150 extra. And this is how the difference was. This is the only one with nano touch. You can see the difference. But here, you can see the reflections. And here, no reflections. This is very interesting. I think the difference is massive, but in my day-to-day -day experience, I, even if I work in the sun, I have a app that I install called Brighton Tosh, which increases the brightness really high. I don't feel like I need the nano texture display because the display is really good already. Even the Mac Pro display, the studio display is so reflective. So that's why I did not get the nano texture display. Instead, I got the cheapest MacBook Pro M4, which is 1600 US dollars in the US. I added the student discount, which became $1,500. Then I added one TB storage, then it became $1,700 on the student discount. And I first was surprised by the hardware changes. So the most noticeable hardware changes you see is, first of all, this comes with the space black color, which is obviously better than the space gray because black color makes the MacBook look more premium as compared to the space gray color. And most importantly, the biggest hardware change you will see is in the webcam. The webcam was shockingly amazing. Oh my God, this camera is now a joke. Look at this. And now this has center stage. I, even if I bend down, you will see my full face on my laptop. Even if I make it this way, you will still see my full face. This is very impressive. But I will not be appreciating the webcam because I always use my iPhone as a webcam. I always carry this Balkan adapter in my backpack all the time because this becomes my second tripod. So what I usually do is open my laptop and then put this on the MagSafe and then use the back camera as a webcam. And you can see some of the podcasts I recorded with just this setup. I have made so many reels with just this setup on my tripod and it is just one of the best accessory I bought. I'll have a link in the description as well. So the MacBook's webcam upgrade is big, but I don't appreciate it because I always have this in my bag. And this is Mac Studio and this big Mac Pro, my palm size, and this is so small. Mac Mini is so impressive, and power button on the back, insane. And another reason I wanted to upgrade was this MacBook I've handled very poorly. There are so many scratches you will see. There's also a dent on this side because this MacBook fell as well. There are so, so many scratches you will see. Now the number three hardware upgrade is the brightness, which you will not even see indoors. So even if I turn on the flashlight right here, you will see minor brightness improvement, 300 nits brighter, but there are so many software that I use. For example, Brighton Tosh, that's an app I use on this MacBook. It already becomes so bright. So I will not appreciate this brightness as much either, but it's definitely a great plus point. But overall, if I have to say the hardware differences, they are most noticeable in battery. The reason I upgraded today is my battery health on my older MacBook is 80 2%, which is really, really down. So it lasts me only three to four hours of video editing. If I'm doing 4K video editing, only three hours or sometimes even less. So that's why I thought I will, con I will upgrade to the M4 Pro MacBook because this has 30% extra battery and it is on paper mentioned as nine hours of battery life with heavy usage, 
plus sometimes you get 20% battery life remaining even after nine hours of extensive usage. So yeah, battery life is really plus point because the chip is now more efficient. It generates less heat as well than previous variants and it is more efficient in terms of performance as well. But when you do the performance actually comparison. So to show you the comparison in real world usage, I want to show you some Geekbench scores and some Reddit posts. So this is the Reddit post I saw, I tweeted about it this morning. So this post actually says that if you compare M1 to M4 series of MacBook, you will see in terms of CPU, the difference is 20% every year. So the graph actually goes in a straight line. But the GPU scores tell something better. M4 Pro is way better deal for GPU as compared to M4. But you should not follow the benchmark scores blindly because if you compare karoge Cinebench scores, Geekbench scores, they will give you different results based on what you actually want to do. So I compared the results with Final Cut Pro. With Final Cut Pro, I exported a video. I have the screenshot. I exported a video in seven minutes, 42 seconds, 4K 30 FPS which is around 13 minutes, the last Singapore video I posted. It exported in seven minutes and 42 seconds on the M4 MacBook Pro, the cheapest MacBook Pro currently you have. And then I compared the results with M1 Pro MacBook, which was one minute slower than this, just one minute. Then I realized, I don't think it's worth it. Then I compared the results I could have on M4 Pro MacBook, which is the Pro chip that you can get on the Pro MacBook, that will actually export in almost four minutes. So if you want to double your Final Cut Pro speed, then go for the Pro chip on the Pro MacBook. It's so confusing. But this basic upgrade is amazing. This is definitely faster than the last year Pro MacBook but the M4 Pro chip is so fast, the difference between non-Pro chip and Pro chip is insane that it makes you look like if you want to get a bigger in, it, it makes you look like if you want to get the biggest upgrade in performance, you should get the Pro chip regardless. But then I thought again, when I thought, do I really want to save two to three minutes every day if there are no lags, no crashes, 16 GB RAM is enough. That's the reason I felt like maybe I should not upgrade. Saving three minutes every export time is not that game changing for me. Because, because programming, Android Studio, Xcode, all the apps I use are running still very fast. I don't have any problems that I'm facing. Photoshop, everything is working really smooth. If I really want an upgrade, I would wish I could afford and get an upgrade in the RAM. But then I thought, yeah, if I want to upgrade in RAM, also in storage, the price will be $2,400. Do I really want to spend it? So I want to wait till there is actually hardware changes in MacBook. That will be the day I will upgrade because right now I'm very happy on this M1 Pro MacBook. And battery life is, of course, three to four hours, but I can manage and stretch for one to two years more. Now this MacBook with M4 chip is heavily, heavily promoted for AI because it is redefined for AI as everywhere you will see. Then I compared the Geekbench scores because AI Geekbench is also here. When you look at Geekbench scores for AI, you will actually see the difference between M4 and M1 and maybe the AI operations will be faster. I don't see any difference. I did AI operations in my M1 iPad and this one. Maybe if you have like a bigger prompt which is intensive it can locally happen on macbook but you always have an option to send it to chat gpt so i think if you really want to upgrade for ai you should not even think about it because <laughs> for training models it is it is better to spend five dollars on an h100 gpu available on aws rather than getting a new hardware right now you have so affordable gpus available on the cloud one year ago, it was almost $10 for, for one hour usage of H100 GPU on Amazon. Now it's basically like, you know, three, four, five dollars. It's so affordable. So if you really want like really high code GPU performance, it's better to rent a GPU on Amazon, Microsoft, 
Azure or GCP, wherever you want to, that will be more efficient. And I have used it so rigorously with this mount as well, which saves your MacBook if it falls like this and also increases the height of the MacBook. And I have used it rigorously. It is so portable, so many memories with it, but I upgraded and then I realized that I actually do not need it. So that's why at this point, it's only worth upgrading for some creators or creative professionals who want to save few minutes here and there. And maybe if their MacBooks crash with the performance they have right now, which is extremely rare to hear, but if they really crash for you, then it's upgrading because I think you should upgrade when you have to rather than when you really want to. And I was at a stage when I want to and I tried to upgrade but I rethink yeah, return karna hai better. 